members have taken with their gear. And what you're going to be looking at here is a picture of us of the sun. One of our club members has a phenomenal telescope that actually another club member made again highlighting the incredible talent we have in our club, but you can see the the prominence the, the flares. Uh, it's really incredible and uh, Eric Coles, who also has a number of astronomy picture of the day um, uh, accolades. I think he's up to nine now. Nine of his images have been hosted on APOD, Astronomy Picture of the Day, uh, took this picture for us. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to introduce Edith Ochter, who is going to make a scale model of our solar system. This is going to be a hands-on event, so hopefully uh, everybody has paper and scissors ready or has the pre-cut uh, 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 paper ready to go ahead and participate. But let me go ahead. I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to turn it over to you, Edith. The floor is all yours. Thank you, Mike. And then I want my video on here. Here we go. All right, so I'm looking forward to having some great participation here for a make and take project. We're going to build a scale model of the solar system. So what I need everybody to have is the capacity to build this. So I'm going to give a few introductory remarks. And I guess I'm not being seen on the screen. Um, I'm live on the presentation. I, Mike, yeah. are you seeing me? I can see you, Edith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can see you. Yeah. Okay. Full screen? Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Then we will just proceed. Um, and so it might be that someone has a view that cannot see the speaker view, perhaps, or if you go to gallery view, we'll see you in one of the squares, but your your video is active and live. Okay, thank you. So what we're gonna do is we are going to need, each of us is gonna need a 40 inch long piece of very narrow paper. So what I'm gonna suggest for those of you who wanna participate is perhaps take two sheets of eight and a half by 11, cut it in half vertically and tape it end to end. And while I'm doing some preliminaries here, you can make yourself that 40 inch sheet of paper. And what we're going to do today is find the relative distances of the planets. And of course, when we look in a textbook, we see uh, in this case, a very dated textbook because we see the sun at the bottom and we see not eight planets, but we see nine. So we know that this is a little dated. Pluto's still in here as a planet. So I'm gonna slide it off the top of my screen here. And uh, sometimes when I was little, when I learned the names of the planets, I learned my very educated mother just served us nine pizzas and pizzas are great. Our club just loves going out for pizza. Mike mentioned the social uh, component of our club. And so I really like that one, but now, since Pluto's off the top of the screen here, no longer considered a planet, it's been relegated to dwarf planet status. We have uh, my very educated mother just served us nachos. Okay, so it's all about food. Um, hopefully in those couple of minutes, everybody had an opportunity to get their paper ready. Uh, you also need a pencil and what we're going to do is we're going to take this 40 inch strip of narrow paper and we are going to make our scale model that can fit in your pocket. Okay, so the first thing I'd like you to do is on one end of the paper, take your pencil and as you can write sun and I'll spell some of these for everybody, S-U-N, that one's pretty easy, I'm sure we've got that. And then on the other end of the paper, well, we're not gonna put Pluto because as I mentioned, it, it's no longer a planet. So what we're, we're gonna put down there is the Kuiper belt. And this is a region that contains uh, comets and a lot of icy objects um, and uh, uh, the dwarf planets. And so we're going to, this one I will spell Kuiper belt on the very edge of the paper. 
It is K-U-I-P-E-R, Kuiper Belt. Okay, and then what we're going to do with our paper is take it and put the sun end touching the Kuiper Belt end. And of course, we're going to, I'm going to put mine down on a hard surface here to get a nice crease and fold that. Okay. So as we open this up, I'd love some audience participation here because I would like to know, not from those of you who absolutely know what planet it is in the middle, but maybe some of our guests who might not know, of all these choices for planets, what do you think is midway between the sun and the Kuiper belt? And I'm going to be looking for responses in chat. I haven't seen any come in yet, but I know that some people, when they're trying to figure this out, they make count and say, well, there are eight of them. So one, two, three, four, uh, let's go with Jupiter or maybe Mars. Well, neither of those is correct. Ooh, I see somebody else saying Neptune, okay? And it's not Neptune either. So these are good guesses. And when I do this uh, out at the national parks where we, my husband and I volunteer, oftentimes the children will tell me Earth. Um, a lot of people think we're the center of everything. But again, this answer is not correct either. So the easiest way to remember is we're now going to take this paper. And what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to throw it over my left shoulder, OK? And I'm going to step back here so you can see. And when I've thrown it over my shoulder, what I'd like to ask you is, what's smack dab in the middle? Anybody want to guess? It's anatomically Uranus. As a planet, I prefer to pronounce it Uranus. So everybody grab your pencil. Believe it or not, Uranus. So all the way out here, Uranus is in the middle between the sun and our 40 inches. And I'll explain the significance of those 40 inches later. So I had lots of guesses. I had Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, but now on that middle crease, if everybody can pick up your pencil and we're gonna label it Uranus, U-R-A-N-U-S, okay. So now, once we have that planet on here, that's our first planet we've put on. We're gonna fold back again to that middle fold and we are going to fold in half again. And again, I'm gonna crease it on my hard surface here. And when I open it up, okay, I have a, bottom, a fold halfway to the bottom, half uh, in between Uranus and the Kuiper belt. And of course, that one has an easy answer. You guys want to help me out? What do we think is between uh, Uranus and the Kuiper belt? And we see that that is a single choice, and that's Neptune. So if everybody can grab your pencil, and we'll put Neptune on this three-quarter mark, I'm going to call it. So N-E-P-T-U-N-E. -E. So once we have that labeled, I now have the quarter mark up here. So midway between the sun and Uranus. So I'm having, getting great participation from you on chat. So now we're looking for what is midway between the sun and Uranus up here. And so does anybody want to put their guesses into chat? And I'm going to wait a few seconds here. And again, you know, my experience with, with people is that they want to end up in the middle here and say, oh, you know, maybe it's going to be Mars or Jupiter again. But those aren't correct either. Believe it or not, it is the gas giant Saturn with its spectacular ring system. And so we're going to pick up our paper. And on this quarter mark, we're going to write Saturn, S-A-T-U-R.
R N. Okay. So going forward, the folds get a little bit trickier, but you can see I'm working powers of two here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the sun and I'm going to fold it onto Saturn. So we're just gonna let this remaining three quarters of our paper kind of trail down to the ground in my case. And I'm gonna make a fold here. And now we have to come up with Oh, I had somebody making a guess already. Okay, so what now? Which of our planet choices are we gonna find midway between the sun and Saturn? So I've had someone guess Mars. Okay, and that's not correct. Would somebody like to make another guess? I'll give you a big hint. It's another gas giant. Do we have somebody who can come up with the name of the other gas giant among the planets here? Jupiter, there we go, very nice. Okay, and so we in fact are going to write Jupiter at this mark, which is J-U-P-I-T-E-R. Okay, Jupiter. And again, we're going to let the vast majority, meaning seven eighths of our paper now, is just trailing down to the floor. And I'm going to put the sun and I'm going to fold it right onto that fold at Jupiter. And I'm going to crease that so you can see we're moving to the top of the paper very rapidly. Now, this one's a little bit tricky because this fold, the name is not here. So, I'm going to describe this as a region that is filled with what I like to think of as potato shaped rocky objects. Can anybody help me figure out what the name of that is? And this is a region that is between the planets Mars and Jupiter. Anybody know what's out there? Okay, very good. I have someone who's guessing that we have the asteroid belt. Multiple people are guessing this. Thank you for your participation. So I'm going to spell asteroid belt. We have A-S-T-E-R-O-I-D and belt, B-E-L-T. Okay. And then you'll hear more about the asteroid belt in other people's talks later this evening. So now I'm going to take my paper and once again, I'm going to fold the sun edge and put it on that fold at the asteroid belt. And we're gonna open that up. Anybody wanna tell me, what am I gonna put on this? And we're now approaching one and a half inches away from the end of our paper. Somebody want to guess what that one is? So this one I have is going to be Mars. So by now, you've probably figured out every time we hold, hold in half and half again and half again and half again and half again, we're just moving straight down closer in toward the sun. So that's right. I have someone who guessed that that's Mars. So on that crease, we're going to put Mars, M. A-R-S, the red planet that gave us absolutely stunning views in the fall. Okay, so now this last fold is actually two folds in one. You're gonna take the sun and put it on Mars, okay? And then while that is still folded, I want you to fold it again. So when we open it up, we are going to find three creases, okay? And at this point, it's pretty obvious coming out from the sun, we are going to label them Mercury, Venus, and our planet Earth. Okay, so Mercury, M-E-R-C-U-R-Y. Venus, we have V-E-N-U-S and Earth, E-A-R-T-H. So, a couple things that I mentioned earlier, um, things that, you know, 
totally surprising when we look at the book that I've been holding up. Sometimes our mind likes to think, oh, look at all those planets. They're evenly distributed throughout our solar system. And I'd like to take a couple looks at parts of our solar system scale model that we just made. One of them is, as I mentioned, we have all of our terrestrial, meaning like our rocky type planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, they're all within that inch and a half. And then those gas giants and ice giants take up the remaining seven eighths of our paper, okay? Um, other things that I wanted to tell you about uh, the scale model of our solar system, of course, every model needs a scale. So the scale that we are using happens to be one inch is what's known as an astronomical unit, okay? And an astronomical unit is the average distance between the Earth and Sun. We're not in a perfectly circular orbit, so we approximate this to be about 93 million miles. So other things to think about when we make this scale model is, so where the heck is the nearest star? So I did some calculations earlier today to Proxima Centauri. And what I found is that we would have to set our piece of paper down on the ground so that we start out from the sun and walk about four and a quarter miles. So about an hour from now, we might get there. And of course, this is on a scale where the sun is only one inch away from us. Um, I have prepared a handout that'll be available on the uh, Northwest Suburban Astronomers website if somebody wants to take a look and, and uh, download and print this. And one column talks about the scale that we use and the actual numbers. And it's amazing to me that this folding exercise and mostly powers of two, except at the end when we went half and half again, um, is fairly precise, uh, particularly for the gas giants and the ice giants. So I hope that you learned quite a bit through this uh, exercise. And if you're interested, we also are gonna have links to other sites that will give, give you ideas for other crafts and projects that'll help you learn more about our solar system. So thanks very much for your participation. And if anybody has a question, I might have about a minute to take one, I think. I don't, haven't seen anything come up in the chat, but I really, really appreciate everyone's participation. And uh, I don't see any questions, so I guess I'll turn it back over to you, Mike. Thank you. Wait. Oh, do we have one? Okay. Would the Art Oort cloud be 80 inches away then? Yes, I think that is about good. And so we would then walk another hour, Jim, to get there. So head out for your two hour, eight mile hike on the road and you might get there. All right, and thank you for all the compliments, everyone. Great job, Edith. Uh, Thanks. Definitely, definitely we'll get our steps in if we uh, go to Alpha Centauri or the Oort Cloud. So yes. wonderful, wonderful. Thanks again.